Hi, and welcome to Building Together with Old School DM and Friends. This is a live stream. Yeah, <laughs> a live stream with some papercraft gamers and designers uh, making stuff and sharing tips and tricks about things they've learned. And uh, we have several guests today. We're having a little challenge getting one of them in, so we'll hang out and, and we'll just proceed, and as they come in, we'll welcome them in. Uh, so, but so far, uh, returning uh, to visit us for a second time is Eric Squirmy Dad Brown. Would you like to talk a little bit about yourself while I show some a slide for you? Sure. Um, I'm a people model designer. Oh, there we go. I make stuff like this. What's on the screen right now? Um, I got into paper modeling uh, by way of uh, Warhammer 40,000 and Full Four Two tabletop gaming. And uh, SiddlersGreen.net put up a free little house, and I thought it was the coolest thing that there was this nice little English house, and it's all painted, and it's the right scale, and I could just um, bang it out while I'm sitting in a, a boring meeting. I could build these little houses. And then I started doing my own things later on once I learned from them that there were other supermodels, that there were other designers. It was pretty awesome from then on. And specialist next? Sure. How we recognize you on uh, Cardboard Warriors. The Fritboards.com, you have the little gingerbread man. It's really cool. Um, we do have another guest coming, hopefully, if the technology works out, uh, a guy named Berber King. Berber King. When he shows up, I'll share his uh, his slide. And uh, I've got some, also have some other stuff. So, uh, Berber King. Uh, so, Eric, you, you run. Uh, Pro boards, right? I mean, uh, cardboard warriors, yeah. pro boards .com. The cardboard warriors forum at pro boards .com. Um, Yeah. And you and Eric and others produce a semi monthly um, set of free um, yeah, designs. Yeah. Monthly? Is it monthly? It is we, monthly. We, we're okay. Event. We've never missed a month? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Well, yeah. <laughs> there were some there were some dark years seven years ago. Yeah. Um, where for a while it was bi monthly and then it was no monthly <laughs> and then there was three months got jumped together and then it got sorted out at the end of twenty thirteen and now it's been monthly ever since. Yeah, so the community makes contributions to groups and, and Vermin King is I think currently the guy who's in charge of coordinating them, but he also puts his own designs in and stuff. Um, and uh, this it's is a good. kit. This is, is what? Prolific modeler. Yes, a prolific modeler. In fact, he's working on some models I can't wait to build. Uh, but some of them are pretty complex, and it takes a while. <laughs> I think he gets discouraged. I thought he could show up. Uh, so I can give him lots of encouragement. Uh, this is uh, Forum Hard number 146, which is available at ProBoards.com. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, at, at uh, OneMonth.com. And uh, you can go there, and you can download this. I took this kit, and uh, actually I have a close-up. Vermin King here, which I will share. That's his original build. Uh, nice show up. Yeah, this this is an original his original build that he posted his uh, when he posted the horde um, from October 19, uh, 2016. Uh, I went ahead and because I like everything to be full flat, I made I tried a new full flat variant, uh, and that's what I'm showing here. Is one that I put together with clips. So the pieces are all held together with a, unfortunately, out of out of uh, print mo modeling clip called Paraclip. 
and they look like this because it's a close-up camera. You can see these are, uh, and you pressure fit them in this slot. Oh, that one's broken. Um, and I'll never replace it because they're out of manufacture. Uh, and so you clip them onto things. And so I made, I took the paper and I put it on some board. And now I can clip it together with another wall, if I can find the wall. This wall will do. And as such, you get a real quick rigid build building to do it for four walls in your room. Um, I really like these clips, and there were a bunch of kits you could get. They were from um, we uh, Weird, I think was the name of the company, uh, that, that made a bunch of stuff uh, for, what's the, the fantasy figures game? Mal uh, Malifo. Malifo, yeah. It's manufactured the Malifo. Uh, bankrolled the manufacturer of, of the clips and a bunch of tiles. But I just showed you can make, you can take kits and adapt them. I'm not sure. This is really great because I got to fill a lot of space. This this contains four buildings, this one cigar box I have. And it takes up a lot of space on uh, my build of, uh, of, uh, of the street area um, in uh, I'm blocking on water deep. Um, and I got to use up a lot of space real fast on the map. Uh, that's one thing I really liked about it. Uh, the downside is if the clips break, I can't replace them. Like one just there, just broke. <laughs> so, yeah, today I mostly want to talk about various trade offs because there was some conversation on the Facebook about someone mad about fold flat design. Someone had a really bad experience or two and said, I won't buy anything if it's fold flat. Uh, and uh, we sorted out a couple things. One was, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, one, and I wanted to acknowledge that some of the complaints that person had were real. And uh, you know, it's not like I just want to say I'm a defender of all full flat at all costs. I'm not actually. Um, uh, I think there's a complexity trade-off that uh, is really interesting, and I want to demonstrate uh, what I think is a failed model in full flat. And it's the Catalan Tavern, which I have here. Um, and I'll share now, this. Did you make it fold flat, or did the? It, it, it literally comes. If you look at it, it says fold up design. It very carefully doesn't say fold flat. It says fold up design. Fold up. Yeah. Um, and so I, I got to take some blame for this because I pressured a lot of people to try fold up, fold out, fold flat stuff on the board. I'm kind of the champion of full flat. But I also want to point out, you know, for people who are encountering this stuff, some people, this was their first attempts to do things. And so different techniques have been evolved over time. It's not like everyone knew how to make a fit, a, a, a kit into full flat, like instantaneously. And different people took different approaches. And today we talk a little bit about um, maybe some of the, the, the less successful approaches and more successful ones. Um, I, I do plan on doing some building in a minute. Uh, so what are you building right now, Eric, while we're, while we're talking um, about this? The last time, um, was it Team Alchemy? I don't know how to say Yeah. Your new name? Team Al, yeah. I was talking Team Al, yeah. I was talking about using scissors. I'm working on this box with a robot. Oh, cool. And trying to do the whole, trying to do the whole thing with my scissors. I remember years ago there was a big stigma against using scissors that they ruined the model. No, it's the tool. She gave some really good advice uh, when she was talking, which was move the paper, don't move the scissors, which uh, which is a good reminder for all of us because I, I do I have my handy scissors here. I don't use them very heavily, but I got to tell you, if I just got to cut a straight line quick, <laughs> sometimes it's just. <laughs> um, I can cut a straight line better with scissors than I can with a knife. My mind wanders. So Dave, Dave sent us a text note that he's been having challenges trying to get his camera to work. Uh, oh. And now he's going to try his phone, I think, which is fine. Sorry, guys. Fair enough. Uh, Fred, do you want to 
pop out and say anything about who you are and for the record this will be on YouTube and recorded and stuff you can pop out and say hi. you know what the brand of that pen was? Do you have one handy? Sure. Uh, um, my son stole them. <laughs> They're upstairs somewhere. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I can run and find them. Oh, it's not, a, it's not a big deal. If you could share it, that's great. No, um. it was, it was a, a cheaper brand, uh, but they still work really well. Okay, and they didn't bleed too much or anything like that? or Cool. Eric, what do you use to edge? And it was, it was like oh. 12 bucks. Sounds like a deal. Um, I've been stuck on these Tombos forever. Yeah, I love that Tombos. And my one edging tip is to not use the tip. Right. And Well, two parts. Uh, when I'm edging, I go at it from the back side, so if my hand slips, I don't screw up the artwork. And I don't use the tip. I use the edge and just drag along the edge of things to do my edging. Yep. You saved me having to say it. That's exactly how I do it. I like to do it. Uh, I also like the pre-edge, which is uh, you'll see today. I will. In fact, I'll get the pieces out I'm likely to use. Um, I'm gonna take a thing. Uh, that's not a good piece of that. Here we go. I did a pre. I did my uh, cutting in advance here, so I can do some building. I have a cutter, so and so the technique I like to use is. Even more so, I'm really lazy, and I'm willing to trade ink for everything, um, which is to edge from the back down on paper. So the first edging pass is tracing the object, wasting most of my ink by drawing on a piece of paper that's not going to use the ink. So you can see that's that. Let's see there. Um, and this works especially well for um, edging minis, like like paper minis. So many of the artists uh, make paper minis with these really rough edges. Because I use a cutter, I get these very fine cuts, and then uh, and then edging it this way avoids a lot of damage. So we see a camera from Galaxy S5. Is that you, Dave? Oops. Here. I have to out where I'm going to put this so I can actually watch and see through. Yeah. Make a little stand. It's a lot easier. There, that's a stand. And it'll also go faster once the core frames all match up. So what happened to my cut here? Oh, no, no, that's right. Oh, there's a little bit of 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 you want it in front of you. <laughs> and don't call me 
prematurely. <laughs> You're fine. to introduce Berman King. This is Berman King. The, we talked about him quite a bit before he showed up. Or maybe he heard it when his panel wasn't working. Um, heard it. I just yeah. seen or myself. You're a very prolific designer and community uh, uh, leader by getting us all, getting all, so many designers to put in contributions to the monthly horde, which is free, absolutely free downloads. That stuff I'm showing here, you can get Go to onemonth.com, click on Hordes, and you can just browse through and get all kinds of free buildings. Uh, and not just buildings, though. There's figures, spaceships. What else is in the Horde there, Dave? Uh, a lot of carts and wagons and carriages, uh, cars, trucks, and some building. Oh. Uh, Yeah, we should. No, should. I, Go ahead. I have different. Seems like every month I have a different temper. Something sparks something where I've got to do something for the past. Well, you know, if you can finish that uh, that cool market bridge, I will build it. I promise you. Oh, oh, I oh, <laughs> you know. Might be years, but I'll wait. <laughs> Released on on, on uh, the forum board. So if you go to cardboard-warriors.proboards.com, you can find this new, brand new ship. You're the first one to design it and build it up, and it's available today. It was amazing that for a ship that I see in the painting of the Rialto Bridge and Grand Canal so often, that there were no models. But That's crazy. I can't wait. So? I love it. I collect ship models, not all of them, but I got to be able to put my minis on them. That's the secret. Uh, there will be plenty of room for minis because I actually have five minis that come with the kit. Great. That sounds great. Look forward to building it. Um, so we do want to announce uh, one thing. I think uh, now that you guys are both here, especially Eric, um, it's probably a good time to talk a little bit about uh, paper cuts. This year, wouldn't you think, Eric? Hey, okay. Sure. So, Paper Touch is a monthly online showcase where people uh, design and build, or just build and photograph, uh, different paper model creations. And it's been going for 10 years. It was started by Sanity Studios. Wow, I can't wait to make this uh, When they were running the forum. There are categories for people who want to design figures, uh, either an individual figure or a group of figures, um, model designs, uh, tile set designs were added a few years ago. Mm. Those are all the design categories. Yeah. Right? This is, this, um, and this is annual, once a year. Yeah. Once a year. It uh, takes place in August is when I start opening up uh, the different uh, threads in the forum, telling people to post stuff here, post, post lots of pictures of it. And just have it all uploaded by the last day of October. Or, or sorry, August. Yeah. Uh, um, I try to oh, enter yeah, every year. Categories, yeah. One that's called Papercraft in Action, which is um, focused on maybe like this picture I'm looking at. It. Well, not that one. Um, uh, people build, and if there is something going on, if it's a picture from a game, that's great. I, when I was a kid, those were always so inspirational. What got me into modeling at all in the first place is like a diorama figures. And then the other category is called uh, Hot Rods or Kit Fashion, where it's open to not 
Yeah, I like entering those last two categories. I'm a builder, normally not a designer. So I'll always pick, you know, something that I put in play and stuff or simulated play or usually play. I actually submit play pictures for that of my paper train. And then uh, everyone knows by now, if you've been following any of this, that there isn't a model I won't kit bash. So <laughs> uh, usually you put in interiors and multiple layers and, and, and windows you can shoot through. Um, so I'm very excited this year. My entry is already ready, so I'm standing by. Um, uh, but it's always great to see work, and um, it's it's fun to encourage new people to participate, um, to, you know, and to learn from each other. So it's what I love about this community is that it is it builds on each other's work. When I talk about um, like this uh, full flat stuff, that's kind of building on different work. I would do some kit bashing. People would say, "Oh, I want to make that for my kid." Um, uh, so, yeah. Um, did you want to share anything, Bourbon King, before we get started? Well, this, this uh, has been kind of frustrating to my conceptual problem. Uh, I'm just going to hang out and follow you guys. All right. Well, you just chatter because I'm, I'm going to talk a lot today. I'm going to do some building, I hope. Uh, but I do want to address some critiques that were uh, were called out, not so politely, but still validly, uh, on a f recent Facebook post related to full flat. Uh, and I wanted to share something first, which is, why bother? Regardless of the rest of the discussion, why bother? And the reason is best manifested by the photo I just put up, which shows uh, 24 buildings, 12 with interiors, on my shelf, and that's not even my whole shelf, that's just a little segment of my shelf. Um, the number of buildings here typically match the number of buildings that people have whole walls to hold. Uh, I have on the order of, of somewhere between 50 and 100, I'm not sure, uh, buildings, uh, full flat, uh, or some variant thereof. Yeah, so how many you got on that table there, Vermin King? Yeah. There's more there. <laughs> You're making my point very well, my friend. <laughs> You're going to need a second house, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, hang on. Oh, wait, that's not being transmitted. Uh, share that again. I'm sorry, please share that again. That was not getting transmitted. That was up while my broadcast were up. Everyone else should see that. I'm sorry, that wasn't recorded. Could you take that little tour again? Dave, could you take that little tour again? That was not on the stream. I'd like you to share that on the stream. Thank you. Everyone heard us talking about how many models you have, but we did, they didn't see it because I had the wrong view up. I'm sorry. Slow down. <laughs> You're blurring. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so that's why bother. That answers the question, why bother? Uh, pro prolific builders have a space money. problem. Also, another reason why bother and why these boxes matter is transportability. Oh, my goodness. Look at that wall. Uh, is transportability. I can literally take one of those wheelie carts like Grandma takes to the market and carry an entire city and a terrasque, which takes up a quarter of the cart, uh, to my local gaming store and run a run a you know a, a, a terrasque scenario destroying a city, you know, a, a kaiju attack. Um, and there are photos of that online. I'm not going to bother sharing them here. If you want to find them, go type in terrasque in Games of Building uh, Games of Berkeley, and you'll find the photos. Um, so those are two compelling reasons for me. And for me, space is a real premium. Um, yeah, but they take longer to build, way longer to build. So Fred builds uh, um, mostly, he said, uh, uh, Dave Gratham models, which I love. And I originally built Dave Gratham boxes. And the few boxes I have sitting around that are buildings are Dave Gratham boxes. Um, uh, but I generally only use them at home on occasion. Uh, 
because they take a lot of space and I have to find them, find them and get them. Um, and they are great models. Hi. Go ahead. Yeah. So what I've got here in front of me is a Dave Gratham model. It is a small house, so I, I, um, but I made it full flat. And not only that, I made the, the interior actually folds in. I'm not, that was the technique. This is an early fold flat technique where I took, I printed the exterior upside down, or the interior upside down on the model. I'll show you real quick. So there it is. You can see. You just fold the interior down, and the tabs on the bottom, which would normally have a floor glued in, don't. I took a floor and put it on some cardstock and tuck it in, and there's a playable house. Now, honestly, this is great for storage. Playable, not so much. I mean, the sides are too high for your minis and things like that. Uh, and then I was trying to do different experiments with roof. So one of the things you have to adapt, and so I made this. Uh, roof pile, you're showing on the close camera here, where I have a folded in roof accordion. Um, it sure stores nice, but it, it really doesn't fit on the box very well. Uh, so if you bump it, it falls off and stuff. I would do a new design, and I've done new design. But the cool thing is, someone else has done the next generation. Mike Proto, who was pre on the first uh, episode of this thing, he came up with a design for a full flat house. Uh, this one has the interior glued in. It has the same, you know, flaps on the bottom. He has slots in the side between those two layers. And uh, again, you pop in the floor to hold the shape like that. And so what you're seeing here is one, two, three pieces, and this is where I'm going. Um, and then he has this design here, which is really kind of cool. He made a slot design to make the roof rigid. Yeah, though it's full flat. So the, it slots in. Get my fingers out of the way. So a couple of slot folds. And this is a kind of alternate approach to my cheesy, foldy, scissory thing. Now the, the roof is sturdy on its own. And now it's got tabs. I don't even care about the tabs. You just tuck them. He has tab slots in there. I don't think you need them because you're not looking in the house while you're in there, and those tabs are holding it in place. So now it's pretty solid as uh, full flat stuff goes. Um, so this is an example of a three piece house worth the effort to store and keep that way. But it's the first place I learned a lesson. And that lesson has to do with cutters. Um, I was folding and unfolding this a lot. Oh, by the way, it also has side tabs. We're plugging the sides of their overkill. We don't need them. You just saw it sat on there fine without the side, without having like four tabs holding it to the, to the house. You only need two to provide friction. Uh, so we over-designed a little bit. But what I learned was really interesting is that if you're using a, ma a cutter, but it's also true for the scoring method where you use a knife to slightly cut your score lines, you're weakening the paper. You're weakening the paper a lot. And so things like fold flat and score don't go together very well because you're folding and unfolding and folding and unfolding that all the time, and that will tear. And specifically uh, on the cutter's default setting, you use perforation. I have a problem, this roof is coming apart uh, because it's perforated down the center and unfolding and unfolding and unfolding and unfolding. Uh, so guess what you do? <laughs> you have to do a whole separate step to preserve it if you do it that way. So I don't score that way anymore. I now score with an embossing tool. What do you guys do for scoring these days? How about you, Vermin? I have a deep. I think it's called a cuticle pusher. And it's got a round ball on the end or something? Uh, actually, it's just got a very dull point on it. 
Yeah. Better yeah. So, so the it, more I use it, the better it works. And Fred, what do you use for scoring? Uh, I'm not that cool. I just uh, lightly run the the knife across the paper. That's what I did for a long time. I have too many accidents that way. Yeah. <laughs> So, so there's another advantage, by the way, to switching um, to a non-cut, non-perforating. In the case of a cutter, they, the default way people have them cut is with a perforation, which is worse. Uh, but good news is, Fred, less, less edging. Because when you score, you create an edging surface that needs to be edged. And I'm really lazy. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about complexity. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, so you were talking about that raised method? This kit comes uh, with it. If you look here, you can see the doors and windows stick up. Also, there's a, a template for cutting out extra, the wood to make it cool. So this is the, I featured this before, the, I think it was the first episode in the add-on, in the second one. Um, farmhouse. I made the same modifications. The original designer, uh, his full flat method has four separate walls that you slot in together with a whole bunch of little slotting stuff, slotting for the top roof and slotting for the floor. And he has a rim that goes around. So you, this is one piece and here's the roof that goes on it. Um, this roof will do, it's not the right roof. Uh, and this roof is one piece also. I literally tuck in the edges, learning the lesson from uh, from Mike Proto's design. Again, a piece for the floor. That's piece two. Piece three. These uh, eaves that I put in here, which the designer has, literally hold it in place. Bam. Uh, three pieces. Really full class. So when I tell people, oh, this is great stuff, you shouldn't get all upset about it, it's because I have a lot of experience and I figured out how to reduce things and keep them simple. So even this model was designed to have full flat option, but the full flat option literally has twice as many pieces as mine. Um, and I'm super lazy. Oh, I lost my zoom. Let's go back. I'm going to put us back here and turn off the audio for now. All right, technical difficulty. We'll be right back. I'm going to have to apologize. This is an overdub that I did after completing the model. Although uh, the zoom connection is resumed, it crashes again, and then it's resumed again. Uh, I am new to this entire OBS, which is the software that lets you mix things, and I did not end up turning the microphone back on, so it was not recorded. Uh, so I'm going to be doing an overdub uh, at triple speed so that we can get through the stuff that was there. I am so grateful to Squirmy Dad and Berman King for talking with me and working with me and working on their kits and sharing their insights. Um, but we'll pick up now. By the way, those photos you just saw were all of a kit by the same designer as the Castellan Tavern, uh, which is the kit that um, I basically, because of all the problems I had with it, stopped re attempting to rebuild this, and this is my attempt to rescue it. Uh, so first I want to go over kind of how many parts there are and how complex it is. It's probably the main thing, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 parts. 
and that is you're supposed to assemble that at the table um, and this is what it looks like when it's assembled uh, I do not recommend uh, this kit for fold uh, fold or uh, for several reasons uh, which I will cover here uh, and I'm trying to do some workarounds how am I going to fix this model uh, one of the problems is small tabs and that they don't keep it structurally together they're too small I'll do a close-up on that later the roofs are flimsy this is one of the problems that uh, we have at this point Vermin King suggested one thing I do is make a nesting box model there are several people who make models that they seem like they take up a lot of space but they nest inside each other and that's a great approach here I'm thinking well you know, I already know that I like linking all the walls together and just storing them folded flat. Uh, so I'm going to try that here. Uh, can I get, uh, for the first floor at least, can I get one model, one piece out of all these? Uh, looks like there's five pieces here. Yeah, that's right, five. I mean, there's five to one. Uh, I wanted to show these tabs that uh, the designer did are too small. Um, even even the big tabs leave a big amount of white space. So I've discovered this stuff called uh, black masking tape. It's exactly what you think it is, it's masking tape, but it's black, it has all the same properties. Uh, it's just solid black. And the nice thing is here, if I can use it to close these gaps, I uh, get free uh, edging, You'll, it'll show through black. If it shows through where the cracks are, um, it'll be black and everything will be fine. Uh, so that's a great cheat I discovered. Uh, at this point, I went over again the same thing I did just before the break because the guys missed my description of how uh, the small farmhouse had more pieces even in their full flat than the one I was doing and how simple this simplifying approach could be used here. One, two, three pieces including the floor. So can we get from 22 as close to three as possible is the goal so that this is possible to assemble in the field. I'm sorry, a lot of conversation was lost here uh, between Vermin King and Eric as well. Uh, but I'm keeping the original floor. I'm going to try to make this full flat, but still be sturdy instead of flimsy. Uh, so here we go. We're going to apply the tape. Oh, before we do that, uh, I had this other idea, which is you love these uh, pieces that are going on the roof, there's a large number of pieces and, and they never look right. They just sit on there with gravity and those tabs really don't hold it down tight. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to glue all of them in. Uh, and this will do two things. Uh, one, let them be as tight as possible. I don't have to try to reprint these and redo these uh, with better tabs because uh, I'm just going to glue them in. And it'll have the added effect of making the roofs much sturdier. Uh, it, now I'm going to need to store this in a bigger box now because all these quote 2D pieces are now be uh, have rigid structure, um, which might beg the question: Well, why store it in a box at all? What if the box is only half as much size or something? And and the answer is: Well, it's now protected from the elements and it won't get crushed. Um, but you know, to be honest, uh, I think this design was a failure, and we're trying to make it work. Uh, Eric, at this point, uh, Squirmy Dad pointed out that uh, a lot of roofs in full flat designs are flimsy. Uh, some of the earlier kits made by companies like WorldWorks Games, the roofs are terrible. Uh, and so that's a fair critique, and it's something that people have worked on over time. And like I said, I showed the small farmhouse, the roof is wonderful. You build the inner layer, you put in uh, fold in flaps, and you've got a really sturdy object, which also has a playable interior. If you don't want the interior, great, don't print the interior. 
uh, but you still want to put in the roof for reinforcing sheets to get a nice solid roof. edging have to re-glue a couple of pieces I won't I don't show that here but uh, this is built years and years ago and some of the glue I was using back in the day wasn't very good that uh, little piece at the top of the screen which is a roof a curvy roof in the back I'm gonna show you more of that later uh, because after this section where I have guests, I go on to finish uh, doing all the modifications. And I have a slideshow at the end with commentary, uh, very quick, uh, that shows you what I did and how it turned out. And more importantly, how many pieces did I get it down to and what does it look like in the box now? I, that's the wrong piece. I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe this doesn't fit. Eventually found the right dormer. Use my color spreader to spread the glue around on the tabs. I'm sorry, this is nowhere near as interesting as when everyone is participating or really love having company for these things. Um, as you can see, I'm laughing and, and having a really good time uh, while I'm trying to recover this project. Those are done. I eventually uh, glue in the uh, chimneys as well. At this point, I didn't think I wanted to. I eventually decided to do it. So let's finish those walls, the grand route around the base. See if I can get all these pieces together. At this point, Berman King is showing me uh, his new project. Uh, he made a uh, ship that you always see in classic Italian paintings uh, and I highly encourage you to go to cardboard-warriors.proboards.com uh, uh, to see it um, and you can actually download it for free and build it. It's a beautiful classic Italian vessel for which there's no other source of that we could find on the internet. So what I'm doing here is making up I, I, I'm, yeah, different kinds of lazy. Um, all the tabs have this problem in that they were cut on my robo cutter, my uh, silhouette cutter, using um, the perforation scoring technique, which is literally to cut with a knife in a perforation pattern. Um, this is a, a bad pattern. Uh, especially for fold flat. It might be fine for some cases, but um, we're going to be folding and unfolding things. It's just no good. Um, it'll tear off, and I'll, I'll show some pictures of big parts of this that got torn off, uh, just assembling and disassembling it. Also, um, along that edge, you do edging like I'm showing here, and that also weakens the paper. So whether you use um, a knife scoring method or perforation scoring method, you are really weakening the paper. And you need that tensile strength uh, to uh, make it work. And so this technique of just putting black masking tape on the back gives you, makes up for that strength problem. Uh, it does introduce a problem you'll notice later. In fact, right even right there. Uh, if you don't put the tape all the way out to the edge of the tab, uh, you might have some insertion problems as uh, you try to stick it into the slot, it might catch on the tape. Um, uh, it's not that big of a deal for me, uh, but um, you know, if you you'll notice later, I start filling out to the edge of the uh, tab just to avoid this problem. Uh, and if you have better techniques than what I'm doing here, where I'm just 
putting it on and then going back and trimming it off, let me know. Uh, but I wanted to get the entire um, surface of the perforated area so there would be no perforation anymore. Um, it does add a little bit of resistance uh, to folding. Uh, masking tape is, is still thicker than, than nothing. Uh, but it's, like I said, don't use uh, duct tape that's too thick and it resists folding too much. And by the way, the, it, 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 as Eric put it at one point during this conversation, he said, uh, duct tape is best at sticking to itself, uh, not to paper. Whereas masking tape is much more designed for this kind of environment. Uh, you can also try, uh, there's available black artist tape. Um, I didn't use that because I wanted the properties of masking tape, but artist, artist tape is fine if you can find it. So here it is, That's it's the point where that little tab's getting a little stuck because the tape is catching on the, uh, the tab. So that's what one looks like. Very straightforward. I decided not to seal it all the way around for reasons which should be clear in a moment, but I'll do the same thing on the left side. If you look at the close-up cam down in the corner, you can see what it looks like, it looks good. Um, now those seams where they would have opened up with just the friction fit, uh, now those openings have little black masking tape on the other side, so it just looks like a solid black edge, which is really nice. And once again, zoom failed very frustrating. Sorry about the hairy arm on the close-up cam. I promise next time I will have the paid thing. I was trying to make it work for free. The first two episodes ran for more than an hour and never disconnected. Uh, but for some reason this one disconnected twice. Uh, so if anyone has any recommendations specifically about Zoom other than I will be paying for the uh, monthly fee while I'm still doing this, um, please let me know in the comments or uh, you can reach me on Cardboard Warriors. Uh, I'm also at Old School DM on uh, all the social platforms, Facebook, Instagram. I should say the reason I build these kits is because I use them. I only want kits when I am going to use those buildings or whatever I'm building. Uh, so I don't build everything that's really interesting to me. I build things I plan to use. Uh, it's an interesting constraint uh, and it's one of the reasons I came to Full Flat because uh, I wanted portability because I run games for the Games of Berkeley near where I live. Um, and I wanted to have big, epic terrain, uh, and I wanted to be able to carry it to and from uh, the game store without taking trip after trip. And sometimes I could even just go on mass transit. Uh, and in fact, uh, you'll find other pictures if you look for old school DM. I did a Tarask fight uh, and also a uh, Kraken encounter, all of which uh, used terrain uh, that um, I transported in a wheelie cart like your grandma uses to go to the grocery store. There, I got that right to the edge, and so it was much easier for that tap to go in. All right, only one piece left. And we'll be ending the, uh, the interaction interactive portion of the session. Again, another plug for um, Cardboard Warriors. Uh, that's where Vermin King hangs out. Uh, that's the site that Squirmy Dan, uh, uh, Squirmy Dad runs. And you can get a lot of free models there. And the upcoming Paper Cuts contest uh, in August. Uh, where everyone is invited to build and or design kits uh, and share them and uh, you know get a little bit of credit at, uh, uh, at drive through RPG uh, but that's not what it's about it's actually about the community sharing tips techniques and kits so
both Eric and Dave Vermin King are prolific designers and contributors, and they also coordinate the monthly hordes that uh, uh, have the community's contributions all placed in them for free. And you can join the community of builders and designers. It's great when we work together. In fact, a lot of what goes on, one of the reasons I wanted to start this series uh, was how collaborative the environment is, that we work together to solve each other's problems and to help each other, you know, support each other in the craft. So I'm hoping this video will show that fold craft is definitely not without its problems and some, uh, some we were never expecting. That people who tried to build kits with 22 pieces with literally hundreds of tabs, you know, more than a hundred tabs you had to connect together. It was just kind of crazy. So look, looks like I'm going to reduce this down. Those five pieces. Now the roof that goes on this last piece is very complicated and destroyed a lot of tabs uh, in previous builds. And that's a problem we're going to solve. More technical difficulties with Zoom. Everything froze there for a moment. So you don't see me disassembling this. And bam. There it is. That's all of the first floor assembled as a single foldable piece. You'll get a better look at this in the slides at the end. Yeah, it fits in a box. So I've already reduced the number of pieces that fast, and there's more to go. Uh, take note of that little piece that's in the center bottom, left left bottom, which is the door and the, uh, the patio. It's kind of a crazy design. It's meant to hang over one of the walls and then the uh, wood supports are supposed to stick under. I'll show you the solution I have for that in the slides. Oh, I missed a couple of seams once I put it together, so I want to make sure those are strong. Real quick draft, put it together, make sure I didn't miss anything. Looks good, assembles with two slots. I think I might have been able to do this by attaching the ones, but I decided not to. I just want to not force the fold to go a specific way so you can fold it however it wants to fold and store in the box. Final edging. I can now edge all these tabs that I didn't dare edge before because that would make them too weak and more likely to uh, tear. And so we'll get a cleaner looking model than I had before as well with less edging challenge. I'm using my little spatula to help where the tape uh, is catching on the slots. It's a handy tool if you don't have it. See that little spatula at the middle of the bottom of the screen? I recommend some kind of tool like that. Very thin, very strong, 
but not too pointy. And there we go. First floor, one piece. Um, and I considered that, given all the stuff we covered, um, a great starting point. And I thank my guests very much for coming. Again, ch check the text for this uh, for links to their works and what's interesting. Goodbye, guys. So here is after. This is after I've made all the changes. Look carefully at this. There's a weird stub. This thing has complications like little stubs and of course three layers of floors. So you don't have to build models this complicated. It's the most complicated full flat. There's torn tabs I told you and now we've got even major chunks can get ripped. Uh, so I had to rebuild these things. But that's that's a that's a preparation technique. The, design flaw here is these tiny slots and these tiny tabs. Those are quarter inch squares and so you can see how small these tabs are. They just don't have enough strength regardless of how you score them. They don't have the tensile strength for being so small to be pushed into a slot and taken out. And even, even when they do they're not going to hold the shape very tightly because they don't have much contact area and they get bent like this and once they're bent they're useless. So my solution I'm going to glue all that stuff. Uh, in this case, I reinforce it with the black tape. Um, so I end up rebuilding the, all the pieces, which are the second and third floors. Um, so here, let's see what it looks like, the pieces. There's the first floor, which I've already shown you. That's installed, and now we're putting in the second floor now, which has the tape single tabs. That's gone in. Now we're going to get the roof for that, which now has the chimney in it. Um, and the next piece is going to be this uh, corners piece, which I glued the tops together. This is a very complicated piece. All those tabs were easy to break off, so I rebuilt the tabs. This is the uh, first floor of the other side, second floor of the other side. Again, where possible, the corners are glued. And the third floor also. So now these are little partial boxes, and this is what it looks like when it's built. That was nine pieces. Let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, roof, nine, and that's it. Let's put them in the box. I even rescued the box by cutting it up and putting it on this box uh, using double-sided tape stuff. It doesn't look great, but it sits on my shelf. And once it's built, it's strong and I'm not afraid of it. Uh, so I'm going to leave you with a few pictures. I thank you very much uh, for sitting through this long. Look how complicated this full flat model is, and I got it down to nine pieces. And it looks this good when it's done. So uh, thanks. Thanks for all the feedback people have given over time talking about these things. Uh, and we can all work on it together. Uh, so now I have a piece of trash that's been turned back into a working building stored in a box, and I can put it together in a reasonable amount of time. I'm Old School DM on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, my YouTube channel holds these um, sessions. And uh, join me again on Twitch at the Old School DM.